So welcome AC fellows. So glad that you're online with us tonight. And tonight we're going to be talking about blended learning. So I have just a few slides for us, not much, but just in the way of talking about what blended learning is, it's primarily two factors that make it blended. One of course is that part of the learning occurs in a traditional brick and mortar building, or as I like to think of it as more face to face. And the other portion occurs in some type of online atmosphere. The other part of that is that students have some degree of control over time, place, path, or pace. And notice that it's not that they have to have a degree of control over all four, but a degree of control over some aspects of those uh, components. So that's what we're looking at when we really talk about blended learning. I just kind of kept it to a very simple uh, definition, but just to get an idea of like, where is everyone in this idea of blended learning? Uh, since Chris and Lanier are gonna be sharing some, uh, Rachel, what about your school? First of all, do you have one-to-one -one computers where every kid has some type of device? We do, we do. Every uh, middle schooler has a laptop and K-5 all have um, uh, iPads, so yeah. Okay, so you're one-to-one -one at the middle school, which of course is where you are. And yep. so are you fully into this blended learning now where you're doing part online in the classroom or part online at home and still Absolutely. having face-to-face -face interaction as well? Yes, yes, we are fully blended. Um, uh, part of being a STEAM school, um, as well as a PBL school, we've got lots of um, integration going on with uh, both online and, um, you know, face-to-face -face stuff. And where, I, where I'm working with them, some flipped stuff, but mostly just a blended, like in the classroom space, blended online and, and in the room learning. Okay, great. So let's uh, let's just take a look at this a little bit and get an idea of what Lanier and Chris do. Uh, Chris is from San Antonio, or not from, he teaches in San Antonio, Texas. Lanier teaches in uh, Morgan County, Alabama. So we've got two Southern states who are addressing blended learning. And so I'll just pose the question here and then I'll ask, for Chris to respond and then for Lanier to respond after this one. Uh, first of all, Chris, who made the decision in your district for you guys to become a, a blended learning district or for you to become a blended learning teacher? Um, I'll probably say, I know just as our campus, um, we had definitely had one-to-one -one, uh, prior to using you guys, but I know our social studies department made a decision also uh, to add you guys um, as a, resource that teachers could use in the social studies department. Okay. Uh, so were some of the other disciplines already blended before you were, or did all of you get blended at the same time? All of us got blended at the same time. Okay. Lanier, what about you? Who made that decision for your district and, and how did you come into this? Um, well, to the, the way I understand it, our um, secondary curriculum coordinator, uh, suggested this as an idea and it seemed that a lot of people you know liked the idea and when I came into the system active classroom was already in place okay and your district uh, went to what one-to-one -one back in the fall right so you haven't really been blended for even a whole year yet is that right that's correct okay and um, crit I mean Chris, what hurdles or challenges do you feel like you've had to overcome in being a, a blended teacher? Well, I, I think that the biggest thing is um, just being prepared for those technical issues that may occur. Um, technology is always great when it works the way it's supposed to work, but um, mm -hmm. always having a plan B and just being prepared for those technical uh, issues that um, that just may simply be out of your control, whether it be an internet issue or um, a student who needs a little bit more time as far as uh, just understanding where you're going with the technology. 
Okay. I, I think that's a very valid challenge. Yes. Good. Uh, Lanier, what about you? What hurdles or challenges do you feel like you've encountered with blended learning? Um, well, to piggyback off of what he was just talking about, um, that internet problem and the reliability of the service, is the problem, which of course that's not an active classroom issue that's on our end, but um, having that plan B because at any moment the internet could go down. And then if you don't have something ready, you are, um, you're going to be in a little bit of a mess and your management is starting to become a problem. But um, other than that, for me, it was, I didn't get to attend an active classroom training when I took this position because I had to um, attend a different training. And so I started to um, figure it out myself and I did okay with it for a little while, but um, I started running into hurdles of what order should I be teaching this in, which lessons do what. And I was starting to get a little bit confused and it just so happened. We had another active classroom training I was able to attend and it's been so helpful. I have to say on that, Lanier, uh, you told me about the problem with the reason you didn't get to attend after classroom training is because they had you new teachers in the district doing something completely different, right? That's correct. I have spoken with your district leaders and they are not going to do that this year. They're going to let the new teachers have a separate day so that the new teachers can also attend uh, your mini mega conference. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. That's really important information for us to know so that we can kind of help be a, a mediator there. Yes. Thank you. So uh, Lanier, what aspects of being a blended teacher do you like most? I know you love active classroom and you can, you can, you know, tell us how that works into it, however you want to, but what aspects do you like most about bl being a blended learning teacher? Um, well, I feel like we certainly are in a, a digital age, that's for sure. And for me, when I first started teaching around 12 years ago, um, honestly, the textbook was your main resource. And um, it's so limited. And in the blending and learning, learning environment, I've noticed that students just have endless amounts of opportunities. They, they get the um, activities that you just can't get out of a textbook. And that part of it, I think is the, one of the most beneficial aspects to it. And just the simple fact that we're staying progressive and forward moving with the way students are learning and the way our world is functioning. I did not realize that you had been a teacher for that long. I, certainly had a different perspective that you had only been in the in the classroom for a few years. You just you're you look so young. Don't take a bit to that. You look so young. <laughs> well I actually started teaching in January of 2002. So this could be like 16 years for me, but I, I had to take a little break. Awesome. Well I appreciate so much what you have to say there. And I hope that that others find that active classroom and doing the blended learning allows students a lot more uh, interaction and access. And Chris, what about you? What What's some of your uh, favorite aspects of, of being a blended learning teacher? I, I would definitely add to that. The only thing I would add to that um, is that my ability to really personalize a lesson uh, based on the student's needs, um, whether it be a disability, um, I have a, a student who has a issue uh, uh, as far as his sight. So, so been, been able to, um, or, or even the, the, the future in active classroom where, where he can make the print larger for him. Uh, that's a great thing. But, but in addition to that, um, like I said, I can really personalize the lesson based on what the students need or if I want to change it up and, and maybe have it sort of with a video, I can actually personalize it. Um, well, one thing I recently started doing was after uh, different exams, uh, when I'm able to look at the student data, I can actually uh, schedule or, or, or assign assignments in that case um, specific to where that student needs help. So in this case, if a student needs help in, uh, or any additional help in, let's say, industrial 
revolution, then I can assign something specific to that student. If another student needed help on early Republic, then I can assign assignments based on that. So that's the unique thing that, that I like about it. But adding to that, I don't always have to have technology involved in it too. I can always uh, uh, still use the same materials from the uh, website in that case to print them up and then build stations around that same activity. Wow. So, so um, constantly being able to change things up specific to what the students need is what I like about it. Okay, now that was very interesting too, Chris. Uh, where are you getting your data from that you're analyzing? Uh, is that coming from the grades that you're seeing or do you have a another uh, piece of software that helps you to really put that into perspective and analyze it? How are you getting at that data? The, the, the district uses Edgeforia. Um, on my own, I did a zip grade where I can actually tag the questions by the standard. Um, so in that case, I can look at uh, by class and I can also look at by the individual students. So I, I print up a Scantron, I scan the Scantron with my cell phone and I can have the score and have the data right there. Um, and so in that case, by, by teaching the, the students how to read their own data, then they can then also take that and, and use that on the lessons that I've assigned in Active Classroom already. Very interesting. Okay. I'm going to have to come back to that and see if you guys are moving towards that personalized learning uh, format. Uh, Chris, what, what impact do you see it having on the students? And I think you've covered some of that already is that they're able to uh, have additional lessons that strengthen those areas where maybe they have some weaknesses yet or haven't quite uh, met the competency level that you want them to reach. But beyond that, is there any other impact particularly you'd like to say that you think blended learning is having on your students? Well, I, I would say um, in, in the fact that they, they, they can actually do it at their own pace um, because sometimes the, the pacing may be off in the classroom. So it's nice for some of them to have the ability to, to, to access the lesson or access the material at home that we covered earlier that day. Um, so that's the other great thing about it. Right. Lanier, what about you? What impact do you see this being or having on your students? Well, um, this more speaking about active classroom, but um, I've really, really noticed that my special education students <clears throat> have that opportunity to have the text read to them. And I've noticed uh, the students, you know, when you give students an option, you can let it read to you if you would like to, or you can read it yourself. Um, of course, the special ed students with reading disabilities need that extra help, but I've noticed they'll look around the room and what they are observing is other students with many different reading levels are using their earbuds and their headphones. So they feel comfortable putting those headphones on, which in essence makes them more successful because many times the problem is actually, you know, decoding the words, not necessarily comprehending the text. That's really interesting. So because the other students are putting on earbuds and headphones, the special education students feel less obvious about using those devices. That's correct. Wow, that's really good. That's that's really good too. Mm -hmm. um, if you could tell someone, Lanier, that's becoming a blended learning teacher, what advice would you give to him or her in getting started? What would you say? Well, the the first thing I would say is don't give up. Um, sometimes when we are presented with something new it is very hard for us to, to make that shift and to move away from what we were doing or just to be able to add to it. Um, the reason I say don't give up is because sometimes if you have not had full training, it's a little bit difficult to understand how things work. But if you'll hang in there, I promise you, you will come to really, really, really enjoy um, Active Classroom. Right. And you, you definitely had to come to that on your own in so many ways. So thank you for that. You're Chris, welcome. what about you? What advice would you give to a teacher who is moving to this blended learning environment? What would help them? What's some lesson learned that you could share? 
I, I would say um, just to keep an open mind, because I know sometimes we can get set in our ways as far as what has worked for us in the past. And I feel like sometimes that can be a hindrance um, when we have new technology that um, that may present the lesson in, in a different way for students. Um, the only other thing is just, you know, like I said, just just be positive and maybe be aware of the energy uh, that you're giving your, your students whenever there's a technical issue that that um, that that you, you don't allow that to interfere with the learning um, and, and just be positive. Um, so that's the, really the only advice that, that, that I would have and um, and be open to, for feedback even from your students on what work well and, and what you can maybe work better with. I think that's good. Kind of like that idea of never let them see you sweat. So even though you're having a tough exactly. day with the technology, don't let them see that it's frustrating you. <laughs> no. Correct. Some really good input. I think about this a lot as we see teachers around the country uh, starting to use active classroom and you know uh, just as you guys all have experienced getting started I think can sometimes be the toughest part once you get going it's like you're so glad you did it but it's that first few steps of deciding to do it and then really jumping in and, and getting started I noticed that Dr. Willis is with us now too. So uh, Dr. Willis, I'm glad that you're online. If you want to say something, kind of jump in with us. Um, I noticed on our blog uh, page that we only have a couple of articles about blended learning. So I would just encourage you guys who are on tonight to go to our blog, blog at socialstates.com. And if you look at that banner there, I clicked on, um, I believe it was digital yes digital to see what uh, blog articles we had regarding digital learning or blended learning and there's only two ones on flipping the classroom and one I don't remember exactly what the title was on that but take a look at those articles and consider what what might you want to say about blended learning and if there's something you would like to say, let me know. We'd love to have you write an article. And of course, it doesn't have to be about blended. It could be about a lot of other topics. But if you have something that you'd like to say about blended learning or anything else, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you write an article and get it posted to our blog site. It's a great resource. And as you can see, it hits a lot of different social studies topics. Uh, not only for teachers, but for administrators as well. And then our next uh, webinar is coming up on May 10th. I'm going to tell you, I really need to hear from you guys. Uh, I want to know what we need to provide for you, for you to feel like you can be your district's go-to person. So the next webinar is about that. It's about what can you do for your district. But what do you need from us? What tools can we provide you with or what training can we provide you with to help you feel like you can be that resource person for your district? Uh, do you need some type of introduction or do we need to do some kind of reach out to your district level administrators to remind them that you've got this additional training? What, what do we need to do to help you in this way? And I know there's only a few of you online tonight, but if you want to use the chat feature or if you want to verbalize it, uh, if you don't have it ready tonight, you'd like to send me something, email. Uh, Aaron, I'd love to hear from you and know what we can do to support you, to strengthen your role in your district. Uh, we really want to build local capacity for Active Classroom, and we really believe that you guys are the way for us to do that, to really put into you and invest in you in ways that you feel confident enough to to work with some of your administrators and and teachers. So let's see, I've got one coming up here. Let's see what Rachel has had to say. And then if you guys want to do that, that would be great. Oh yeah, to remind the administrators, great. Yes, because we really want them to know that you've got some additional training and that you're ready to assist the district in ways to be that kind of active classroom specialist that's there that can answer some questions and talk to people about active classroom and encourage them to use it. 
Okay, good. Thank you, Rachel, again, helping them. Yes. Okay, great, great, very good. Uh, we just we just want to make sure that what we're giving you guys is relevant and worthwhile. Uh, we don't want to just burn your time with these webinars uh, periodically. We really want to do something that gives you some value uh, added to it. Uh, anyone else have any comments that you'd like to share at the moment about what you need for your districts uh, to help with implementation of Active Classroom or to reach out to others and encourage use of Active Classroom? Pam, while they're uh, thinking about that, I did want to chime in here. I really enjoyed just listening to what everybody had to say. It was really very uh, inspiring to me. I liked hearing about the individual uh, stories and how each of your districts got to where they got to. And uh, that's really helpful for us to understand because it can make us more responsive as well. So uh, we definitely need to hear, uh, I like this topic for the next webinar and uh, I hope that we can leverage that and uh, get a good, uh, good bunch of people from across the country to contribute to that conversation. Good, good, thank you. Okay, if we don't have any other, oh, let's see, now we've got one, let's see, a couple here. From Lanier, make sure the district understands we probably need to differentiate sessions. Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Lanier, that is a very important part. You always have a new, an influx of new teachers each year. They need one type of training where I, those who have been in, like you guys have, need other opportunities. That's very important for us to know. Good. Thank you. Yeah, that is good. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, I'd like more about the difference between engaging, explaining, expanding types of lessons in series. Okay. Rachel, let me see if I understand. You'd like to be more savvy about the difference between engaging, explaining, and expanding type lessons. Yep. There was that there was that flow chart that you guys had about um, and and I and I looked at I took one of the um, what do you call them the online webinar thingies where you just do it um, yeah. about that um, thing where you can decide which which are the the lesson starters versus which is like the content meet which is uh, versus which is um, the the way that you enrich, you know, right? You okay, I can't remember the name of that 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 sheet. Okay, but I I, I know what sheet you're talking about. Definitely, Yay. it's a correlation. Yeah, a correlation that kind of gives you an idea of starting activities, building activities, and then like culminating activities. Thank you. Yes. 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 That's the right okay. language. Sorry. Great. That is very good. And that might make a really nice webinar for next time. Good. Yeah, I think that the, that the teachers in my district would really, as they are exploring um, Active Classroom, that would help them navigate the the incredible cornucopia of, of <laughs> resources. <that> it <laughs> Wonderful. That's great. Yes. I love getting ideas for webinars all together. That's great. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking time to be with us again and uh, having been with us through this year with the AC Fellows and we have one more session to go and made the tent. Uh, we really appreciate having your interaction and please send me an email and let me know other things that you need to, uh, to be that go-to person in your district, how we can help you kind of establish that for yourself. Let me know what I can do to help. Dr. Willis is here to help as well. So anything else before we say good night? Thanks to everyone. Thank you all so much. I look forward to our next time together, May 10th, and I will talk with you then. Good night. Christopher it was really nice to hear what you had to say. Thanks. Thank you. You guys were great. Thanks so much.